I hold in my hand this six-page letter. It's unlike anything I've ever seen from a sitting president, really anything I've ever seen even from Donald Trump, marshalling the weight of the world's most powerful office to declare himself as the sole arbiter of what actions are impeachable. Have you read this? He does so without any kind of real deep thought. It's just a stream of consciousness uh, bombarding you with mistruths, with lies, with personal animus, and a staggering lack of comprehension for the reality that he now finds himself in, and as a result, the rest of us do as well. Set aside the absurdity that is littered throughout this thing. Again, you can read it for yourself. Here's some of the highlights. He says Pelosi has cheapened the importance of the very ugly word impeachment, that she views democracy as her enemy. Or when the sitting president in an official letter declares, declares an attempted coup is underway. The basic facts that he tries to present are not on his side. He attempts to defend his conversation with the president of Ukraine by saying he put the transcript of his phone call immediately out. But the call happened in July. We didn't see a word of it until September. And remember when that was. It was after the whistleblower went public. As for his instance that every time I talk with a foreign leader, I put America's interest first, we wouldn't know. His White House quit releasing readouts with calls of foreign leaders. And now they just changed the rules so even fewer can hear what he says. There's been a dozen between two that you should hear, though. I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. I keep playing that because it was the most embarrassing moment I've had as an American vis-a-vis -vis our president in Helsinki, before the world, next to Putin, the guy responsible. You could see a little smile on his face as the president threw his own country under the bus. But he just keeps talking to him and obviously taking his advice. All this is undercut in the very next paragraph, where the president blows up any argument this was about broader corruption fighting by launching into a tirade against Joe Biden. He offers up the Sharpie-worthy testimony of his donor buddy turned ambassador, Gordon Sunland, despite the questions that persist about, I don't even know whether that call happened. The White House won't give us proof of it. The State Department won't give us proof of it. It just happens to have the president saying everything he needed to say to clear himself from this, using language that only the whistleblower used, certainly not the Latin that this president is used to saying. So I don't even know that it happened, but he uses it and states it as fact. He ignores the full context. And none of this is new for this president. He teed off on another favorite target, House Intel Chair Adam Schiff, for what he calls shameless lies fantasy language, despite the fact that Schiff said this at the same hearing. Well, it reads like a classic organized crime shakedown. Shorn of its rambling character and in not so many words, this is the essence of what the president communicates. Look, while we're pointing out the factual mistake, there's also the president's insistence that you've found nothing when it comes to the Mueller report. In fact, the special counsel listed at least 10 instances of potential obstruction, and he clearly wanted to leave it for Congress. And he also said this, Mr. Mueller, about the president's conduct. The president was not exculpated for the acts that he allegedly committed. Look, I think the Democrats should be scrutinized for not including those in the articles of impeachment. Well, why? Because back then, they were saying those were impeachable acts. They were talking about impeachment then. That was their play, and arguably a misplay, and one that Pelosi didn't want to follow until she ultimately had to. So now they don't even include them? I think that's worthy of scrutiny if you're going to have one for the history books. And look, make no mistake, Donald Trump can be a uniquely skilled politician. But when it gets personal, and he gets into the mode of him or anybody and anything else, this letter is what you get. He can't admit that he did anything wrong, so he must be the victim, bemoaning the great damage and hurt inflicted upon wonderful and loving members of my family. The irony here is that there's a long line of families like Gold Star father Kazir Khan and 16-year-old Greta Thunberg who have felt the pain of being targeted by the most powerful man on the planet. People don't go after him and his family the way he does others, and even if they did, 
Since when is the president of the United States equal to his worst opponents? There is one person in his office. He is arguably the most powerful person in the world. And yet people around him, and obviously he himself, believe that it is okay for him to act the same way as his worst opponent. Since when has been, that been the standard of conduct for a sitting president, for a higher power, for someone who believes in that? And yet here he is, assuming he speaks for all Americans of faith, by attacking the speakers, saying, you are offending Americans of faith by continually saying, I pray for the president. Does he not understand prayer? Prayer doesn't change things. It is an attempt to change people. It would be Pelosi asking for help for him, but in as much doing that, help for herself to deal with her situation. That's what prayer is. It's not magic. And it's certainly not offensive to anybody of faith. If we had more prayer from our people in elected office and from all of us, we'd be in a better place no matter what you believe.